What's going on YouTube? How's it going? Uh, my name is Harrison back with another video and today we're going to be going over what is going on with South and North Carolina. They currently have eight teams in the top 25 which is absolutely crazy and we're going to be going over every single one of them today. So let's get into it. First off we're going to start with Coastal Carolina. Now, Coastal Carolina hasn't had the best start to their season, starting at 1-2, and two, but that doesn't mean they haven't been competitive. They beat George Mason 26 to nothing in their first game, but ended up losing to Indiana 7-2, to two, even though the game was really close until the ninth inning when Indiana scored four to really close that game out. Duke was their next game where they kept it close, but ended up losing 5-3. to three. And even though they've started out bad, they still sit at number 25, on the top 25 of the national rankings, which is still really, really, really good considering there's something like 300-something Div Division One schools. So that's really good. The next school that we have up is South Carolina, currently sitting at number 21 on the top 25, starting their season at 3-0 and and absolutely crushing their opponents with a 30-5 run differential, um, making none of their games even close, putting up 14 runs in their last game. Just dominant pitching by their pitching staff and led on their offense by Ethan Petrie, who even though he's only had two hits over 10 at-bats, those two hits have been big home runs that have really helped with their offensive production, along with Lee Ellis, who is one of their freshmen this year, who brings elite defense, elite speed, and great contact hitting, kind of like an Enrique Bradfield Jr. did for Vanderbilt last year. The next college we're going to be talking about is Clemson. Clemson is currently sitting at number 10 on the top 25 as the second highest Carolina school in the country. Also starting their season off at 3-0, dominating, just straight dominating their opponents 33-13 to with that run differential. And even though they've given up more runs than South Carolina has, they have also put up more runs, which can lead to their success. I don't think they've looked that great this season. That's just my opinion. But then again, it's also the very start of the season. So we will not know how good one team will be for the whole season. We just know how good they look right now. And they look good, just in my opinion, they don't look great. They're looking to make a push for the World Series this year and hoping that their pitching staff, which is arguably better than their offense, can really push them to that. The next school is Duke. Duke, obviously a very prestigious and academically rigorous school, but their baseball team has started the season off 3-0, and and just like all of their other Carolina opponents, teams, uh, they have dominated their opponents 34 to 12 in the run differential department obviously having one of the best pitching staffs in the carolinas but also scoring 34 runs is insane they currently sit at 12th in the country so they're they're looking to make a world series run i don't know if it's going to happen just because i don't know how well that pitching staff and that offense will hold up against real competition since they haven't really faced any yet but they did drop 23 on George Mason, which seems to be a pretty normal occurrence for these Carolina schools, as you also saw Coastal Carolina drop 26 on them. So not, not a great start for the um, George Mason, whatever they are. Um, but yeah, Duke's looking to make a run. Don't think they'll do it, but I, they're looking to make one. NC State is currently sitting at 2-1 and one with a mediocre start to their season, but still has them placed 13th in the country. They haven't really been great as a team, really haven't like figured it out offensively this season yet, but their pitching staff has been absolutely elite, led by Sam Highfill with a 1.8 ERA and Ryan Marone, who has a 0 ERA. Both very quality starts from them that helped them get two very big wins. The fifth school? Yep. No, sixth school. Sixth school is UNC. Um, They've obviously produced a bunch of players. Um, Zach Gallen is one of their more recent and more notable productions. But they currently sit at 3-0, just like a lot of these other schools on here. Um, 
But unlike the other schools, their offense has absolutely exploded this season, dropping 46 runs over three games. I don't know what that averages out to, but I know it's a lot. And they've only given up 14 runs on the pitching side, which is pretty good considering they're using metal bats in college. Now, they're currently led by their top draft pick this year, and his name is Vance Honeycutt. I have a video on him that will give you a full rundown on who he is. But they currently hold strong at number 15. Definitely looking to make a World Series run this year. Came close last year, unfortunately fell. Um, but they're definitely looking to make it this year and just dominate more offensively. East Carolina University, one of the most perennially good teams out there. You will never see them have a bad season. They're always going to be good, but they've never been able to get over that hump and actually get to the World Series. Now, Parker Bird is one of the best stories in college baseball this year as he became the first Division I baseball player to play with a prosthetic leg. On top of that, they're currently sitting at number 11 in the top 25, also being 3-0, and led by their insane pitching staff only giving up two runs over three games, which is absolutely crazy. So we will see if they actually make that jump this year or they stall out just like the last couple of years. Now, on to our last team, but the best team probably in the country. No, they, they are. Best team in the country is Wake Forest. Currently sitting at 3-0, just like a lot of these other Carolina schools. Um, they have absolutely dominated. Uh, tried to make a World Series run last year, fell short. They're looking to come back this year and just dominate every single person that they see. Um, they're led by Chase Burns, Joss Hartle, Michael Massey on the pitching side. All in the top 50 in the top 100 prospects to be drafted this year. On top of that, on their offensive side, they're led by Nick Kurtz and Seaver King, who are top 20 to be drafted this year. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're producing out there in the Carolinas, but it's it's crazy. They're easily one of the best regions of baseball in college baseball. I mean, producing eight teams in the top 25 is crazy enough. But having, what, seven, six of those teams be in the top 20, not just the top 25, is absolutely crazy. So we're going to see how good they do for the rest of the season. But that will be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.